It's going to be about 32 to 33 gallons. They think they can make up a lot of ground since the others had to take the long fill on their last stop. Will Pruitt become a contender? We're going to find out in about two laps. Currently running in third. DeFerrin in second. Pruitt third. And I'm wondering now about Jack Villeneuve. He is now eighth. That's the position he needs. He stopped 10 laps ago. Allenser Jr. is in 10th. He has a long way to make up. And most of the cars in front of him, save two, save Pruitt and Guzman, have already made their second stop of the day. So it looks like it's tilting once again a little bit toward Jack Villeneuve. And you can see that DeFerrin is brave down that inside move, but you can also see there is lots of tire buildup offline now as this race goes on here. So anybody that wants to move high or forces himself to go high can get in trouble very easy, particularly on the downhill run out of the carousel, out of, out of the uh, corkscrew. Look at Gordon's broken right front wing. Yeah, I think parts of it is laying over on the outside of turn 11. That'll change the handling, though. You know, we have seen races, though, time after time, where drivers, there's there's the other half of the wing, uh, time after time where the wing is turned down, the wing is missing, and the lap times don't change appreciably. Mm, I don't think that'll be the case for Robbie Gordon. For some reason, Derek Walker, oh, see that right front? No downforce on the right side of the front of the car. That's why the wheel is lightly loaded. That's why it locks up under braking. But Derek Walker is at pains to understand why on natural road courses, they just simply have not been fast this year. They're fast everywhere else. But he realizes that engineering-wise, they may... A wanker, man. Well, that was an interesting comment by our boy Robbie. I don't, I don't know who he was talking about. And Mauricio Guzman comes out of the lead, makes his stop. Jan? Well, it has to go oh, for a moment there. It didn't come up off the air jacks. That's going to hurt the timing here for fit, this pit stop. They got the wheels undone, but it took a while to come up. They're waiting for the fuel now. There was no changes made on the aerodynamics. Mauricio Guzman underway. Well, they tried for the short fill, but it wasn't a short stop. 15.3 seconds for Scott Pruitt. I don't know if they had a problem, but they were hoping for something better than that. They're happy, but I think it could have been better. So Pruitt and Guzman make their second, and theoretically the final stop of the race. Michael Andretti coming down the hill, still in pursuit of Al Unser Jr. and just ahead of Teo Fabi. So the second round of stops complete, you saw during those stops. to wrap up the championship here. And Alan... straightaways. It has a gleaming red finish, durable enough to withstand vigorous bumping. It seats one comfortably. And although this vehicle will never win any speed races, it will help you come out ahead week after week in the checkout lane. It goes by the lofty title, The American Dream. But it's also known as the fixer-upper with one and a half bands. Or the new wagon with room for ten. On occasion, it goes by the name the orthodontist said braces, or both. So if you're Bank of America, you stand by to help with the money. No matter what the dream's called. Even when it answers to Jenny, college freshman, class of 2005. Banking on America. Bank of America. 
for Jack Villeneuve to wrap up the championship. He's 13th. Al Unser Jr. is now in a must-win situation. He is in seventh place. And maybe now, finally, Gary Gerald, they have repaired the problem on Villeneuve's car. Well, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of intrigue that surrounds the change. They pulled the old nose off. They immediately covered with a blanket. Billy Camphausen, one of the tech leaders for IndyCar, came over. We got a look at it. We saw some very ragged honeycomb down on the left front side plate of the wing and then one of the crew members threw it under the blanket and literally ran with the wing back toward the transporter so they've got it out of here and the new wing they're hoping will not have any problems cutting down a tire i'm still not i don't know if they're convinced that was the problem but they sure got it out of here in a hurry well as derek has said so many times today he can't take the chance it's that simple jack villeneuve 13th you can see tail Fabi got around al Enzer jr jan Vikas. earlier we saw Marco Greco come in with that shredded tire, but up here in Robbie Gordon's pit, you can see that the nose is smashed, the wing is missing. That was the contact that happened between Robbie Gordon and Marco Greco. Simply a case of Gordon working through, Greco not seeing him turning in, and big time contact, as you can see. And so they have now changed it out for a, a, a fresh wing. I assume everything's in good shape on the new nose. Well, now, 13. All 26 cars that started this race are still running. We're 60 laps into the run, 24 laps to go in the season. Including Brian Herter, so maybe Chip Ganassi now knows what that gremlin was, and it will be fixed for next, for next year. Bill now, 13th place, needs ninth or better. Ahead of him, Johnstone, Rivero, and Fernandez. Let's go back to Fangio. Take a look at his onboard camera. As he comes, I was hoping to get to you a little, a little faster than that so you can see him dive down the carousel, but maybe we can stay an entire lap. Originally, Danny Sullivan had hoped to get back into this Bank of America car for this last race at Laguna, but that was a bit ambitious with the broken pelvis. to see everything that Fangio learned because it is a learning curve during his first, of course it is his rookie IndyCar season, although he doesn't run many races. Balancing the car through the corners with the throttle is the whole key to the overall lap here. One fast corner is no good. As we watch Fangio, Gary Gerald, an update on Villeneuve. Well, Barry Green talking to his driver, and the veteran Green trying to keep his driver right in step. He says, we're P13 now. Partner Johnstone is next. P9 is all we need. Just stay focused. They just keep talking him around it. They don't want him to get frustrated over this turn of events with the cut tires. Ninth place is what he needs now. Allen Jr. needs to win. The bonus point beginning to make a difference here. DeFerrin still the leader. And look at those chunks of rubber beginning to get kicked up on the side of the racetrack. As you go down through from the carousel, down through turn nine in particular, the next corner, the left-hander they're going to go to now, you can clearly see the marbles on the outside of the racing line. There they are right there. Huge buildup of rubber. And inside. And inside also. Venture out there. We continue to watch little Al. He closes once again on tail Fabian. When he came in for that pit stop, he was very happy with the handling of the car. He has slipped back in position, not because there's any problem with the car, but just by virtue of the timing of that pit stop. So he has the potential of getting back to those positions he had earlier, but at the moment, a lot of traffic to work through, Paul. Right behind there is Bobby Rahal. Every winner at Laguna Seca started from the front row but one, and that was Ray Hall in 87 when he started third. DeFerrin started third today. Fastest lap of the race by Jill DeFerrin came on lap seven, chasing Jack Villeneuve, 108.1 miles an hour. 
the EDS scoring system flashing all these facts to us. Really, we're talking multiple systems that EDS supplies. We watch and have everything controlled off of a, uh, a system provided specifically for television. The media has another system, and then there's an absolute fail-safe system that works for the officials of the race. So should we lose what we have, they still readily score the race all electronically, all by computer. It's really marvelous. Vassar, whose car does not like the sunshine. As soon as the sun comes out, this car becomes a bit of a handful. This is a fight for position, though, behind Bobby Rahal. Interesting, when it was cool, Jimmy Vassar had the fastest car here on the morning warm of this morning and yesterday morning, Saturday. 62 laps complete, 84 the scheduled distance. It's still DeFerrin leading Paul Tracy and Jack Villeneuve and Alan Jr. battle. Onward and upward, the awards. The honors, the accolades for the Toyota Camry continue to rise. Driven by a powerful V6 engine, precision crafted to the highest standards, Camry has risen to become the gold standard. While its starting price hasn't risen at all, introducing the 1995 Toyota Camry, newly styled, refined, and headed for even greater heights. There's a fine line of motor oil separating your car's engine parts that's as little as a thousandth of an inch. But friction and heat can make motor oil become volatile and vaporize, weakening its ability to protect expensive parts. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility, fight vaporization, and provide complete engine protection, no matter what you drive. Add more life to your car. Take it to the stars. a pump, jumping out of balloons with bungee cords on or riding a motorcycle at 100 miles an hour with my head tucked over the handlebars, not being able to see anything, that is definitely an adrenaline high. Knowing that your life hangs this far between life and death, you know, you get those endorphins popping, that, that incredible feeling, that rush. I kind of like being on stage. It's definitely escapism. I never really have experienced true zen, but I'm hoping me and my Ducati will get there. ESPN2, people who do. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, 8 o'clock Eastern. Baseball's most storied rivalry continues. The Red Sox and the Yankees do battle. Andre Ribeiro's car by the edge of the course. You can see Andre standing up behind the wall. And how did he get here? Well, obviously he drove. He was running just in front of Jack Villeneuve. That's Brian Herta. Whoa! Now, that could have been very nasty. I'm not sure Brian Herta saw Ribeiro trying to go down the outside, but that was a wild ride. The concrete first, then to the tires. And this that fact is the chassis that Scott Goodyear drove at the Indy 500. Now watch. Just slow the camera here. Just slow down. Just go a little bit more. Watch how high this car gets. Look at this, look at this, all four wheels virtually off the ground. And the leading car, Gilles de Ferran, gets a grandstand view and thankfully goes down the inside and misses everything. I'll tell you what, that is the one kind of contact you don't want to have. You get that right front in between those two wheels, that's what will launch it, and that, that may be just a small launch. Interlocking wheels and open wheel racing cars is potentially the most dangerous accident you can have. Remember, that was at about 80 miles an hour in the braking zone. So sitting against the wall here in the last race of the season, the car but for a black flag might have won the Indianapolis 500. DeFerrin avoids it and leads. We're moving into the colony. This is everything we've dreamed about. They're exactly the kind of people I want here at the colony. There are lots of skeletons under these gilded streets. What kind of stuff are you teaching these kids? The phone just went dead. We're locked in. Mom, I'm scared. John Ritter, Mary Page Keller, Hal Linden, a USA Pictures original, The Colony, your home for life. 
Lancaster Flooring has some hot deals to go along with the hot weather. Head to Lancaster Flooring and see what the summer clearance sale is all about. Everything is priced to sell. Indoor, outdoor carpets as low as $2.99 a square yard. High lows as low as $4.99 and plushes as low as $6.99 a square yard. You can save today and install tomorrow. Get immediate installation on hundreds of rolls of carpet in stock. The deals are hot, but you'll stay cool with a fresh new look from Lancaster Flooring. Lancaster Flooring, where the greatest discounts are found. now for Andre Ribeiro's uh, confrontation with the wall after bouncing off of Herta. And during the 